All right, hello everyone. Today is April 1st, April Fool's Day, 2019. Um, this is my community brain dump session. This is my open forum to discuss pretty much, uh, uh, pretty much anything, topics, comments, uh, feedback from people that they've given me over the course of the show. Um, I had some, I'm going to start with, uh, I'll start with some trouble that I had, actually. I try to be pretty honest about um, the progress that I'm making with building out the show. And, you know, it's really good. I want to say that a big thank you to to all of my friends that have been pretty supportive. Um, hey, Melissa. Hey, can you do me a favor if you're watching? Can you, could you give me a thumbs up? Hey, Keith. Can someone give me a thumbs up if the sound is on? I've been having some difficulty with the sound uh, streaming OBS through Facebook. So I guess I'll wait a second to see if the sound is working. If you don't mind, if you're watching, if anyone's watching, do you mind giving me a thumbs up? So you got sound? Yeah, yeah I did it. Amazing. Um, so I'll just start right there. I hope you're not lying. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. Um, I'll just start right there. Um, so last Thursday night was my first show that I tried to stream on a Thursday night uh, via Facebook Live on using OBS. So those of you that stream, if you've ever used streaming software, um, it's not that simple to, con I mean, it's pretty simple to configure, but you know, I don't, I guess I don't spend enough time practicing and pretty much when you're going to practice um, streaming live, you got to stream live. So I ran like three or four videos the week before testing it out on Monday and I thought it worked and then I did a whole show um, last Thursday so those of you who watched the show and messaged me and I got lots of messages from lots of people um, I apologize uh, I thank you for your input and your feedback I apologize I totally blew that because uh, my friend Becky who's up in New York literally posted in the comments she's like I can't hear you but I thought for a second sorry Becky I literally thought for a second that was because maybe there was something with her sound, but no one else said anything, and I literally did this whole 30-minute show. It was free-flowing. I thought it was a good point. I thought it was good material. As soon as I was done and I, I cut over to replay the video, I realized I didn't have any sound. So for those of you who watched uh, last week, I apologize. Um, sound didn't work. I think I got the sound tested now. Melissa gave me a thumbs up. She's watching down in San Antonio. And it looks like the sound might be working, so I appreciate the feedback. Um, so that's pretty much a recap. I'm going to stream live every Thursday night via Facebook Live instead of YouTube. I'm going to use YouTube as the repository to store all the videos, so you don't, I don't have to have them in a collected space on Facebook. So I'll use the Facebook forum for the shows every Thursday night, download those videos when they're done, post them over to YouTube. So you can still subscribe to the YouTube channel, so if you don't catch the Facebook Live and you don't know where to catch the content, you can still go back and watch those videos in sequential order on YouTube. So again, the YouTube channel is iTutor Math Show. It's iTutor is one word, Math Show. Uh, you could subscribe. And again, if you believe in the content and the mission of the show, what I'm trying to do with the show, I'm going to ask you like I, I ask every week, please share, share the content because I'm trying to reach an audience of families that might be struggling. I mean, we are struggling as a nation mathematically. This is my gift, this is what I do, this is what I really love to do. So I'm trying to reach a broader audience. Again, I don't, there's, there's nothing in this for me other than being able to serve people with the gift that I have. So that's enough about last week. I blew it last week and all transparency and honesty, I blew last week's show. So I'm gonna pick up again this Thursday with the start of that four part series and the four-part series basically covers um, word problems, vocabulary, word problems. So uh, thank you for the thanks for the thumbs up, Luis. Thank you for watching. So essentially, starting this Thursday, which this Thursday's date is the fourth. So starting April fourth, I'm gonna so April fourth, eleventh, eighteenth, and the twenty-fifth of this 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 month, I'm going to host a four-part series that basically covers word problems. Really simple stuff, stuff that you can find out on your own. Hey, Luis, stuff that you, anyone can find out on their own, but I'm going to give you a collection point, a place where you can see the information, you can download that information, and again, give you a practice. For those of you who are like really concerned about your child mastering word problems and not going through that whole struggle of moving from 
fundamental mathematics at first, second, and third grade, and then they get into word problems where it's a little bit more difficult because of that whole comprehension component, um, you're going to want to watch those four shows. Again, all I'm going to do is give you a list of words that what you do is you just go home and you start working with your children to master those vocabulary words because those vocabulary words translate to a, an element of math. So I'll say this like I've been saying it for years. Math is only consists of four fundamental elements that everyone must know. That's add, subtract, multiply, and divide. If you can add, then the opposite of addition is subtraction. If you can add a lot or add multiple times, you're basically multiplying. Opposite of multiplication is division. So essentially, if you can master addition, you could pretty much do any level of mathematics, contrary to what other people say, contrary to people who argue that point against me. This is not a, uh, this, my show is not a place to debate. I get lots of comments from people who try to refute some of the things. Look, I've been teaching this stuff for a long time. The proof is in the pudding. And like I told my boy Jay Allen, my video guy, there's a lot of pies out there that I've helped make the past 15 years. Lots of families that have been touched. Lots of families that have been uh, blessed by the efforts to try to help them, not because of something great in about me, but just giving the gift that I have. So again, four part series starting Thursday touches on nothing but uh, word problems and the vocabulary that you could start working with your child to help them prepare. So when they see things like increase by or more than or quotient or less than those kind of key words, those keyword indicators, they'll know exactly um, they'll be prepared to handle those word problems because that's what you want, right? You don't want, the, you don't want the language of mathematics getting in the way, which leads me to another point I want to talk about real quick. And there's, there's my boy, Mr. Polito. Those of you who went to Northside, grew up in the Northside area. Mr. Polito was my literary mentor. He's a big advocate. Don't read his comments. His, his account probably got hacked. Um, so moving into that, I want to say I got your message. So my, boy, my buddy, Mike Peters, um, I posted some information way back when I was starting to build out the logo for the show and trying to get the design for the show. Um, his grandson, Owen, actually gave some really good feedback. And I know somewhere along one of the shows that I've done since I started, I mentioned that comment, but I just want to go ahead and say it right now. So, Owen, if you're watching, if you're watching with your grandpa, Mike, I apologize that I didn't relay that to you before, but I want to thank you for your input because your input really was invaluable. Now, I'm sorry that I didn't pick a specific logo based on that, but your input was real important. And it just reminds me of something very, very important. We all don't learn the same way, which doesn't mean that we don't all know how to learn things. My friend Owen is colorblind, and he offered insight into the logo that I was creating for the iTutor Math Show, specifically giving feedback from, the, from his perspective or perspective um, to people who might see things the way he does. So I apologize, Owen, for not saying something sooner. I know I mentioned a thank you before. I can't remember the show, but I promise your grandpa, Mike, and I got his text message, so he's keeping me on point. Uh, so, Mike, if you see the show and he doesn't, make sure you relay that to Owen, please. I appreciate it. Um, everyone else, thanks for joining. Just kind of recap. I'm not going to be long-winded tonight. Um, I do want to offer a little bit of motivation and a little bit of encouragement uh, because our children are about to take the STAR test, right? This is a big deal. And I just started, uh, I, I just helped a friend. So I have a friend that I used to work with at American Airlines, and he reached out to me to work with his daughter. And a lovely little girl, very intelligent little girl. And I always ask parents when they come to me and their children really aren't struggling mathematically why they want to tutor. And everybody has their different reasons. And he, he particularly, that his family wants to make sure that his daughter doesn't ever fall behind, which is a great, excellent thing to do. The whole point of me doing the show is to help families work at home with their children so that they don't fall behind. So kudos to my buddy Richard. Very nice to meet you, Danny. You're a wonderful, intelligent young lady. You actually probably won't need me very long because you'll probably surpass me. If you want to know what grade she's in, she's in third grade. So it was really nice to meet you, Dana. Really pleasure working with you. Um, so that's that. So I give uh, my props to my buddy Owen for his input. So now I want to talk about the star because working with one of my other students, I have a, another student and she's a young lady also, she's in fifth grade, and uh, I'm not, I'm not going to put her on blast, uh, but I, there's something very, very important that I want to share, and I want to share this to all 
families that hear the show. So I want to talk to the family who says, hey, I have a child that's really, really stressed about the STAR test, the upcoming STAR test. Um, and of course, lots of people reach out to me to get my in input, they ask for insight, or sometimes they ask if I have any encouraging words to offer kids that are about to take the STAR. And all the years that I've been teaching, all the years that I've mastered and taught the standardized tests, from the tax tests um, back in the early 2000s to the transition of the STAR tests, to the GED 2014 test, which is the retired tax test, just so you know, uh, this is my words of wisdom that I'd like to offer uh, for people who are with their kids. If you're watching the show with your child, if you want to play this show back to your child, these are my words of wisdom for the star. It's just a test. It's not the end of the world. I know that you feel like there's lots of pressure that's put on you. Um, the whole fear that if I don't pass the test, what happens? I'm going to tell you right now, one day you're going to be 44 years old and you're going to look back on your life and you're going to say it was just a test. So parents, the encouragement that I want to offer you to offer to your children is look them in the face, tell them I love you, tell them I'm proud of you, and tell them it's just a test. And if you want to go a step further and do it Bobby Ozuna style, tell them to go fail the test. Just liberate them. Just totally liberate them from this fear that they have to get a certain grade. The only thing they have to do is be prepared that morning to learn how to clear their mind Take the test to the best of their abilities and move on. I know there's so much emphasis we put in the state, especially in the state of Texas. We put so much emphasis on the STAR test. Now, there are a multitude of business reasons why that happens. The school system is a business. Don't be fooled. It is a business. It is a money-making business. Of course, there is funding associated with the STAR test. But of course, outside of that, you got to think about the teachers. These are people who chose a profession to give all of their time, all of their heart, all of their passion to educating our children with minimal reward, really. If you think about it, if you think about the jobs that you've had, the careers that you had, that you loved, but maybe it was hard to make a living and you had to make big choices. I had to make the big choice of walking away from working within the school system in lieu of I have to eat and provide for my family. That wasn't an easy decision. And all the years that I did it and all the people who've been doing it for many, many, many years, dedicating day in and day out of putting up with kids and rules and structure and curriculum. Do it because they love your children. So don't forget, they love your children. They have a mandate. They've been asked to help the children pass the start test. So no blame game. All it is, at the end of the day, it's all about the kids. It's all about your children. It's all about your child. It's all about your family and your home. And I'm telling you right now, don't put that pressure on them. Don't talk about it more than you need to talk about it. You just look them in the face and you say, I love you. I'm proud of you. I know that you've been working hard at it. And all I want you to do is that day of the STAR test, sit down and do that math test to the best of your abilities. And then it's over. If they fail it, guess what? They failed it. Does that make them a failure? No. And I hope if your child fails the STAR test or if your child gets a score that is below passing, I hope that you remember that at the end of the day, they're your children and that you love them. And you just want to support them and encourage them. I don't care what grade they're in. It's not the end of the world. Do the best that you can. I hope that those of you who've been watching the show since I started in January, you had a chance to go back and look at some of the star material. Um, you had a chance to review some release tests with your children. Practice some of the elements. Remember, the passing score isn't 70%. If your child gets a 70% on the STAR test, you're going to get a letter, a big letter that says you're commended. It's, a very, it's not as high as what you think, about the 55 percentile area, and your child would have done well enough to pass the STAR test. So again, tell them, don't spend too much time. You, you see a problem and you don't know the answer, don't pick one right away. Make a, little, make a little mark next to it. Don't waste any time. Move on to the next problem because... Sometimes it takes a little a moment to get your, mat, your mind thinking mathematically to prepare to mm -hmm. answer math tests. So a fun little trick that you could do with your kids before, I know it's annoying, but a fun little trick you could do with your kids before they take a test is uh, practice a couple of cheap addition and multiplication problems. Maybe on a phone, ask them some questions out loud. Just get them thinking mathematically. So when they get to that first problem, when they get to that first problem, they're not, they're not blocked out. Okay, so if they don't know, and tell them. You get to that first problem and you're kind of blanking out, don't pick an answer. Don't just pick one for the sake of picking one. Go 
Go to the second problem. If that's not triggering anything, go to the third problem. Eventually, that brain's going to kick in. Their, their mathematical mind's going to kick in. And then that's when you want them to go back and do those problems that they'll prob probably get right because they're in a different state of mind. It takes a little while. It takes a moment for some people. So remember, get plenty of rest. Encourage the hell out of them. Excuse my language, but you encourage your kids to just do the best that they can and then be done with it. You tell them that you're proud of them. You tell them that you love them. But more than that, tell them they don't need to be afraid because at the end of the day, again, it's just a test. Some of these star tests start as early as April 9th, so next Tuesday is D-Day for a lot of people in the state of Texas. If you're outside of the state of Texas and you have a standardized test, I wish your children good luck. I wish them the best, and more than that, send them love, show them love, tell them that you're proud of them, tell them that you love them. If you don't get the scores that you're happy with, just remember, there's always a starting point. You never know what you need to practice on until you know what you're not doing good at. Simple, right? It's kind of like sports. So identifying what your child doesn't know is actually a good thing for you because that's the things you can build on. And don't forget, they say statistically that we are three years behind some of the most prominent and dominant countries in the world mathematically, three years behind. And if you think about this, if you get a summer break from kindergarten to 11th grade, from kindergarten to 11th grade is 12 years. You get a three month summer break, what's 12 times three? 12 times 3 is 36. There's the three years that we're behind. So when you hear experts and you hear people or you read articles that say America is three years behind the power curve to a lot of nations in the world, just keep in mind that's because we take three years off between kindergarten and 11th grade going into 12th grade. We take a total of three years of school off. So if you identify weak areas areas that need improvement for your child based on the star test results, don't forget, you have a whole summer. You have a whole summer that you can work with your child 30 minutes, four nights a week, and that's going to keep them sharp. It's going to help enhance those skills. And it's also an opportunity that the time that they don't get in the regular school system because they have a curriculum and they have to follow certain calendar dates to move on to material, you don't have that at home. You have the luxury of saying, I can spend a month learning how to multiply fractions, if that's what it takes for my child. You have the luxury of saying that I can spend a month learning how to do one-step equations, if that's what it takes. Or I can take three months, all summer long, four nights a week, 30 minutes a night, helping my child with um, slope, understanding linear equations. You give them that time. All the things that I teach on the Thursday night show are things that your child needs to know. So keep that in mind. You keep watching the show. You stay current with the things that I'm sharing with you. I'm telling you right now, whether you're an adult student going back to get your GED, if you're an adult student that has to remediate in college to get to college math, or you're a child as young as first grade, everything that I teach and I talk about on the Thursday night shows is relevant for your academic career. So I hope you stay in touch with me. I hope you continue watching. I hope you continue to pro provide me feedback. Everybody who messages me, you reach back out to me, you provide that input, I really appreciate it. Because again, ultimately, the whole purpose of me doing this show is to support, is to support your family and your child. Because I believe that we can do better in this country. I think that we can blow out every nation in the world. That's just me. I might be a little arrogant mathematically, but that's what I believe. So, um, thank you, Luis. Hey, uh, thank you, Luis, for that comment. Did you tell your students that they have to stay awake in order to learn your lesson? I'll tell you right now, Captain, my captain, I learned from you. No one falls asleep while I'm talking. So <laughs> I appreciate everybody who's supporting. Um, I completely switched over to Facebook Live. So this Thursday, legitimate show. I'm starting the four-part series on word problems. You want to watch it. You want to watch it as a parent so I can give you some tips, give you those techniques and that approach to help your children start learning how to master word problems at an early age or even at, at, a, at a later age. It doesn't matter. If your goal is to get at least a two-year degree in the state of Texas, you got to pass college math. So the material I'm sharing with you is specific to word problems. You don't want to miss it. And if you're an adult and one day you might have children, guess what? They're going to have to do the same thing because math's never really going to change. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate the support. Thank you for all the love. Thank you for everybody who's been reaching out. Thank you for the comments. Keep them coming. 
Um, I really do appreciate it. Hope to catch you live on Thursday. This show will be saved, posted to my YouTube channel. So if you're not a subscriber, again, go out to YouTube, look for the iTutor Math Show, subscribe, and do me one favor. It's my, this, is, this is my one ask of you. Those of you who are supporting me, those of you that are contributing information to help me build the show, my one ask is to share it. Share it with someone else. Remember, 51 million, fam 51 million children in the public school system between kindergarten and 12th grade. Public school system, 51 million students. I want to reach 1% of that population to help transform those families, to build an environment of learning at home so we can master the math problem we have in America. My name is Bobby Azuna. I love you and I appreciate you. I will catch you Thursday night, hopefully. Have a good night.